Hi everybody and welcome to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland College. Jim, as usual on the show, we like to get right to it. And unfortunately this week we have some bad news. We had yes. a little, little trouble in River City, as I like to say. <laughs> and uh, um, unfortunately you guys fell 41-20 to 20 to Concordia yeah. in Mequon, Wisconsin. Yeah, it was. You know, the score was one of those games where the score maybe didn't indicate exactly how the game was played. Um, I guess sometimes in those kind of games, if you get beat up and you don't get a lot of yards, you don't play well, you're like, you know, they, they, they got us this week. We kind of, I told the kids, like, we didn't necessarily, they didn't necessarily win, we kind of necessarily lost that game, and, and we didn't play well in certain spurts. And what happened was, I told the kids, we played well for 56 minutes. Unfortunately, the game 60 minutes, and in those four minutes we didn't play well, we gave up about 31 points on, on various, on various uh, different plays on both sides of the ball. And yeah. the toughest thing as a coach is, you know, you coach what you see. I've always loved that. I forgot who I heard it from, but you coach what you see. You don't, it's not the kids. If a kid's making a mistake, it's us as coaches mm -hmm. who didn't get that point across or didn't, didn't have that, you know, ingrained in their head. So, you know, I felt bad after that game knowing that we had opportunities to win that game. And it might sound crazy if someone wasn't there. They might have been like, whoa, 41-20. Then you start looking at the stats and looking at the game. We were inside their 25-yard line the whole game. Mm -hmm. We just didn't make plays down there. And they're a big play offense. And they're going to make plays. they got great speed kids and skilled kids. And they run really well. But we had good opportunity. And unfortunately, we just, you know, we didn't get the job done. And mm -hmm. we got to be able to do that in big games, you know. And hopefully, it's a learning. You hate to, you hate to lose a game and make it a, a learning, you like to win the game as a learning experience, but you lose the game, you got to tell the kids, hey, it's a learning experience. You know, this is the kind of game we want to be in. Hopefully, for as long as I'm, you know, allowed to be coach here, that we play in a lot more of these kind of games, that kids get more and more acclimated to them, and like, hey, this is just a step six to us, and we got to get this thing done, and, and we're as good as they are. So I, I, the only thing that came out of it where I felt good was I said, if they are – you know, we beat McMurray, who was a defending champs, and, and they're a little down this year. But Concordia and Aurora, they are two teams that are, you know, that they're usually up there in the conference. Well, we played this one, and it wasn't like there was a talent level drop off. It wasn't like, oh man, we're going to have to do so much. No, we just got to play better in those games and make less mistakes than they do, mm -hmm. you know, to win the game. So that's where I felt good. I said, we're, we're there. Mm -hmm. You know, we just gotta we gotta get the job done. Yep, and you hit it right on the head. You guys clearly dominated the game statistically, mm -hmm. um, which is probably a frustration to you too. Yeah. But you guys, first down, rushing yards, passing yards, total yards, time of possession, pretty much everything. You guys were yeah. led Concordia, and so I mean, your kids have to feel look back and at least feel positive about that. Except for again, those four minutes. Right, and, and and big games, and I don't care if it's baseball or you know high school or college or pro football. Mm -hmm. It comes down to, I told the kids. Big kid or big time players make big time right. plays in big time games, yeah. and, and they had some kids who were seniors, been there before, I think, and and they made some plays. We made some plays too. Unfortunately, we did not make some plays, yeah. you know, in certain situations. And like I said, I feel worse about that because, you know, a lot of times, like I said, you're watching your your kid or your kids, mm -hmm. and they make a bad play. You're like, did I rep that enough? Did I, I mean it's easy as a coach for us to say. Oh, that kid played bad. Well, no, that, that's such a cop out. It, it, it's sad. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just a sad way to look as co at coaching. It's, if a kid makes a mistake, we make the mistake as coaches, right. and we gotta go back and, and make sure we don't make those same mistakes in crucial situations. I mean, we fumble, we fumble at the end of the half, which could, which, which hurt us. We every time we made a mistake, they capitalized. Right. Every time they made a mistake, we didn't capitalize. Unlike a McMurray game or. Even, a, or even um, a Carthage game, they made a mistake, we pounced on it. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of that deal. So we, the momentum would swing, but they'd swing right back to them. Mm -hmm. We couldn't keep the momentum swing going. So we got to work on that and really harp on making people pay when they make mistakes and not giving them opportunities to, to uh, get, this, get the ball rolling. But the truth of the matter is these kids really haven't been in that position for a long right. time. I mean, maybe looking back, I think some of the seniors, they started out maybe 4-1 and one their freshman year. I might be wrong about that. Might have even been the year before they got here. Right. But they haven't been. They've been battling 500 really for the last right. four years. And all of a sudden now they get in a big game, and it might take a, the growing experience. Right, and, my, and, and you hate, you know, it's, it's something else as a coach. You also look and say, well, maybe that's it. And maybe, you yeah. know, I don't know, confident or an arrogant, whatever you, us coaches all are who want to be good coaches, you're like, right. Hey, forget that. We gotta play. But maybe that was part of it. Maybe that was, maybe um, you know, maybe we didn't prepare properly for that big moment. But you know, as the game went on, we were there. We just weren't. We didn't make those plays when we could. And hopefully, those kids do grow. And I told them yesterday when we practiced, I said, "Hey, get used to being in these positions mm -hmm. because you have a great opportunity to finish in the top of this league, still being first or second. Um, if you 
do what you have to do. You can't worry about what anybody else does. We do what we do. You finish first or second in this league, from this moment forward, you'll always be picked. You know how it is in conferences. Yep. Yep. Whoever finishes first or second, doesn't matter how good or bad they are the next year, they're always picked up there mm -hmm. because it's kind of a, hey, what did you do for me last sure. year? Well, so we get to that point all of a sudden, everyone knows we're there. Mm -hmm. And I told this because you, you have a time right now, opportunity to be the best team since 1997 record-wise. Right. And even before then, there weren't a lot of 10 and 0 seasons. There was a 10 and 0 97. Before that, it was some, maybe some 8 and 2 or 7 and 3s or something around there. But you got a great opportunity to get this thing right back to where it was and then just catapult yourself from that moment forward. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the yep. game. You guys uh, uh, fell behind 7 0 um, late in the or excuse me, early in the first quarter. Early. Concordia jumped out on an 80 yard pass play from uh, their quarterback, Bonnenberg, to their receiver, Collier. Right. And we, we had them third, I think. I tell you what, after a while, you try to forget the game as quickly as possible <laughs> after you lose. But we um, we did kick off. We had them third and 12. Mm -hmm. We had them third and 12, and we ended up um, just getting beat. You know, we got beat deep, which really, you know, can't happen. You know, especially on third and 12. Sure. You know, and, and they make a big play, and and they jump ahead, and we come back and almost make a big play. But that's how the game went. It was almost a almost uh, oh so close and, and you know you just can't keep doing that to yourselves sure. and they made a play the quarterback made a good throw the kid made a great catch and away they went we came back and and came right back down the field and we had a fourth and i got fourth and two on the 12 and we drop a pass you know first down pass which could have got us right back in it then a couple more drives went back and forth yeah. and then again another big play this time they had a 45 yard interception return by levon hall that yeah, had seven other, yeah it wasn't a bad throw um <laughs> Kid made a good break. Our kid made a good break. The ball is just a touch behind him. Their DB is a pretty special player. We, we got behind him a couple of times, and we thought we had him off us a little bit. He made a good break. Our receiver made an okay break. Throw was just a little bit behind, but he made a deep comeback throw. Mm -hmm. Kid made a great play. Tipped it three times to himself, you know, corralled it in, and, and took it in. And right then you're going 14 nothing. Yeah. At Concordia, fog's rolling in. <laughs> Misty wind, you're going, oh, they kick off with the wind. They pin us. We run, we get like the eight yard line. You and me are talking the way up. Mm -hmm. Here's our here's what I'm most proud of our kids. I'm most pleased with is they're like, oh man, eight yard. We put a 92 yard drive together, 14 plays or something, mm -hmm. and come back and make it 14 seven. Jeff Taft catches a, a nine yard or 10 yard fade from Brandon, and all of a sudden it's 14 seven. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you're gonna read the next play. Yeah, no, 14 seven. <laughs> and unfortunately, it was at the 702 mark. And let's put yeah. this in perspective at yeah. the 647 mark. Uh, Brandon Parker, 70 yard run. Yeah, we kicked off, and as a windy game, so we kicked into the wind. Short kick, they fumbled it. We almost get it back. You're like, this is it. Here, here we go again. Mm -hmm. Next play. They run a little counter play. The kid cuts it back. Really great running by a little, little quick son of a gun that just, you know, he can gash it, and he gashed it. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're going. <laughs> and then, like you said, you're going to read another big play that happens right after that. Well, first you guys had a great big play. I mean, but, I mean yeah. people watching this game just had to be exhausted. Oh, they liked watching it. It. That little support there was amazing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like a tennis yeah, match. Well, it was a tennis match. But you guys, of course, Courtney, Courtney Gatton had an 85-yard uh, touchdown reception from Loopke. Yeah, that was second. I think, I think it was the second play after they mm -hmm. kicked off and we had the ball back. And all of a sudden, we had an 80 yard screen pass for a touchdown. I was 21 14. Now you're going, told you we're right back in it. And then the, the end of the half was really tough on us. That was um, just a tough situation. They drove and kicked the field goal, make it 24 14. Yep. All right, there's a minute something left in the half. We get the ball at okay field position. And I said to myself, hey, we're just going to run the ball once or twice. Mm -hmm. If we get great yardage, let's see what happens. But I wasn't going to go hurry up inside our 20 yard line. We make two plays, we're at the 38 now. Mm -hmm. Now you're going 53 seconds left, 30 yard. We get one pass play. You never know what could happen. At worst, we can get one of those Hail Marys into the end zone sure. and maybe get us a cheap one. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, at the half. We end up, Brent ends up dropping back, you know, fumbling. I, you know, we talk about ball security and mm -hmm. just be smart. Unfortunately, he gets the ball stripped. They hit a fade again with like 20 something seconds left in the half, yep. I think it was, wasn't it? And, yeah. and they go up 31. So the game could have been 24 14, makes it 31 14. Kids are down. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's down. You're like, oh no, here we. And I just kind of talked to him at halftime and said, hey, there's been a lot of great comebacks before. It's only 17 points. Not like it's, it's not like you're getting outplayed. Mm -hmm. You're getting out big played, mm -hmm. you know, but we're not getting outplayed. And we come back out, we keep it close in the third quarter. Let's see what happens in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you, got, you guys came back midway through the third quarter. You guys had uh, Denham punching in from three yards yeah. out. That made it 31-20 at this point. And 31-20, unfortunately, missed the extra point. It was 31-20. Now you're going, hey, we're two scores away. Mm -hmm. We got opportunities now. We make something that plus we were in the red zone two times before that already. We had that third quarter worked out. I couldn't have scripted a better third quarter. Mm -hmm. We stopped them on, on defense, and we got the ball back on offense every time inside their 50. And we ended up 
um, going for it on fourth down once I'm missing it, and then getting it, like you said, now it's 31 20, and we still have an opportunity. Plus, you had the win at your back. In the yeah, back I had the win at the back. Right they gave us the win because I think they wanted to make sure we didn't get in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. which gave us a great chance to really get this thing rolling again. I hate to bring it up again, unfortunately. Oh, you're going another big play. Another big play, yep. A 40-yard run. It was the fourth Simmons. quarter, wasn't it? Yep, right at the start. 14.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Ten seconds in. Uh, Simmons ran it in from 40 yards out, and that made it 38-20. Yeah, tough thing was that came back from a 31-20. We threw an interception off a tip pass. Defense just got us a fumble back. So it's one of those, here we go, yeah, 31-20, and all of a sudden we just took the, I feel like that took the wind out of us in terms of we got momentum back for about two plays. Mm -hmm. We get back to them. Their kid gashes us again. It's 38-20. Yeah. And instead of sitting there and moaning about it, what do we do? We drive back down <laughs> and have about an eight-minute drive or something or a six-minute drive. About a six-minute drive, we get down there, fourth and two on the 10-yard line or 11-yard line around there, and we miss a – you know, we had an open receiver. We just He just didn't see him for some reason. Brett just didn't see him. And, and unfortunately, that stuff happens, and, and that was kind of the end of that game. They kicked the field goal late. And, um, and that was it. But we had another opportunity in the red zone. So we had, I think we had six times inside the red zone. We scored twice. Mm -hmm. and you just can't do. You can't go 33 percent in the red zone and, and win a game. I think another big difference that showed in this yeah. game too is that obviously we talked about the big plays a few times. And, and but one thing I think that stands out too is the advantage that they had a little bit with their kicking game. I mean, it, yes, we've been struggling a little bit this yeah, year. Yeah, our punting game game's solid. Our punting yeah. game's solid. Both sides of the punt, punt return are good. Mm -hmm. um, Kickout coverage hasn't been bad. Um, Kick up returns here and there, hit and miss, but our just PAT field goal game just isn't yeah. where it needs to be. And unfortunately, sometimes I think that wears into us as coaches, at least in my head, or sometimes if you have a really solid, it's no offense to anybody, I think it's, yeah. we got to correct it as coaches, we got to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unfair what's going on. Because sometimes you kick those field goals, and all of a sudden, if you kick two field goals now, now it might have been 31 26 mm -hmm. or, you know, 31 27, maybe that, you know, we had time where you could have said, hey, if I get a field goal here, we can still get a touchdown later. But unfortunately, when your kicking game's not going well, you go for a lot of fourth downs. It's never a high percentage play. Yep. You know, if it was, everybody would do it. Yeah. But we gotta, we gotta get that straight now. We got four games left. And we really gotta get that thing rolling so we can not be not be uh, nervous kicking a field goal and yeah. sometimes kick them. I'm getting the side, I gotta go to break yeah. here. They need to go pretty quick, so we're gonna come back. <laughs> we're gonna take a look at some highlights when we get back in the second half of the show and talk about next, week, next week's opponents. So stay with us. We'll be right back with more on the Lakeland Locker Room. Before you know it, she talks. Before you know it, she walks. Before you know it, she knows you. Before you know it, she has a heart. Before you know you're pregnant, when your baby's no bigger than a grain of rice. Before she's a twinkle in your eye, that's when you need to take folic acid every day. After that, it's too late to prevent some serious birth defects. Folic acid now, before you know it. What does being involved really mean? Is it making grilled cheese sandwiches for a sleepover? Staying for the curtain call at the talent show? Or learning the names of their favorite bands? Believe it or not, right now, there are parents just like you out there talking about things like this. From school to home, from friends to futures. And we'd like you to be a part of it. National PTA, every child, one voice. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland. Jim, we were just talking about the game, and we're going to get the videos uh, set up here in a minute, but I uh, uh, just talked about the kicking game a little bit, and at the course, we talked about the outcome, 41-20. Right. Um, at the end of the game, what did you say to your guys first? Then at, right, no, right I the talked, I said, I go, I think you'll appreciate this. I think a lot of times coaches try to go in there, and they try and sugarcoat stuff. They try, and I said, hey, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Nothing I say is going to make you feel any better. Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to say? They, they knew it was a big game. We knew it was a big game. We unfortunately lost a big game. And it's not going to, anything I say is going to make them feel all of a sudden great. But I just told them, hey, you know, winning or losing this game should not have made you play harder mm -hmm. or not as hard in, in game seven. I know we got four games left in the season. We had a great opportunity to be the most successful school team yep. in the school in the last seven years, let alone, I bet you, like the top 10 records of this school. They'd be eight and two is gonna be somewhere in the ballpark. Right. So at least it's gonna be in the conversation. I said, you guys got a great chance to lay the foundation down for something really special. Mm -hmm. I go, and that's what you gotta do. And you can't take, you can't control what Concordia does from this moment forward. You know, they're in first place now. We're in second place. Mm -hmm. It's a one game difference. If you start thinking about what they're gonna do every week, you forget about what you have to do. All of a sudden, you start stumbling. And you just take one step at a time, like we always have. 
take care of our business. Concordia stumbles, stumbles will be there, mm -hmm. you know. And you know, because kids, are, what happens if they lose or you know, man, you can't yeah. worry about that. You worry about as I've seen teams worry about that next thing you know, they're back in the dumper because they kept trying to worry about what Concordia is trying to do. Well, we can't control Concordia. We can control you know Lakeland. So we're going to control Lakeland and what we do. So that's what I told him. I said, hey, you're allowed to. I always tell him after a win, you can be. You can celebrate and be excited until two o'clock at practice. Mm -hmm. And the same thing occurs with the loss. You can let this thing be done at two o'clock, or you can let it eat you up until next thing you know your head's rolling because you just played, you know, four games not as good. So by two o'clock, we're gonna go over some things, we're gonna say some things, and then it's over on to, on to our next game. One thing I think might get overlooked too is, is the advantage of having a JV program because I know yeah. that sometimes within our baseball program we've come off a tough loss and then all of a sudden the kids get re-energized yeah. and they forget it, they get back on the field. Yeah. You guys had to come back on Sunday and play ripping in a JV. Right, game. and we won. I think that was a big win for yep. us as a school. Yeah. We ended up winning 26-15 and mm -hmm. it was good. Kids played well and we have some good young kids playing, mm -hmm. um, which is exciting as well. I think it's, right. it's always good when you get a win somewhere in your program, mm -hmm. especially after a tough loss. Sure. It would have been twice as damaging when you, yeah. your JV <laughs> went out there and got beat or something. So they played really well. They, they kind of picked us up and they played hard and we had some kids who are going to be good players for us out there playing. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and look at yep. the tapes. I think we're all set up and ready to go here. All right. Coach Wars, the GA, let's see what he did. Early on in the game, like I said, that's a running back who ends up making a couple plays later. Getting great swarm tackle by our defense. Here's Jeff Taft catching a fade. Phil, it was kind of a dark day and a foggy day at, at good old Mequon. But Jeff Taft makes a great catch in the corner of the end zone to make that 14-7. And this is Courtney Gatlin. After that big run, make it 21-7. Courtney has a screen pass up top, makes one guy miss, and he's out the gate. And the great thing about this play is you're not sure how fast Courtney is, but he realizes he's a lot faster than that kid trying to catch him. And that's a good thing. And Courtney pulls away. Courtney's going to be a pretty darn good player for us. Here's that end of, the, end of the half. We end up getting a little bubble. It's probably the worst thing that probably happened because I, I started feeling good, like, hey, we might get in position. That's Jeff Tapp making another catch. This is Marcus Denham making a really nice play here on a swing pass. Good blocking by our receivers. He gashes it, almost slithers, slithers through everything for about 12. Marcus just keeps getting better and better. Here's Marcus getting 10 or 12. Here's a 152-pound kid blowing up at safety and getting 12. Here's our defense again, led by Rosie and those guys making a great play. On the, I mean, that, that's how it happened all game. Here's Marcus diving in from two yards out to make it 31-20. Momentum back on our side. Here's our stroke in the quarterback, fumble. You know, ball goes out of bounds. Oh, well, it doesn't go out of bounds. It goes to that kid who makes about seven different moves and still gets tackled. And here's another play by our defense. The interior defense played pretty well. And there's a fumble. At 31-20, there's a fumble. that got us an opportunity to get us right back into it. Here's a nice catch by James Hayes. On a corner route, nice move, gets about 35 yards, gets back in position again, back in the red zone, as I kept telling the kids. Yep. We just kept being back in the red zone, back in the red zone. <laughs> Our red zone, they went from the 26-yard line into the end zone, and, you, you know, you got to be good in the red zone. And good teams, and very good teams, are usually very good in the red zone. They either, they, they have a high percentage right now. Right now, we're not as high percentage as we need to be, because you're not going to get in the red zone a ton, but if you do, you got to make teams, you know, you got to make teams pay for letting you in the red zone. Mm -hmm. We did a great job in this game. T between the 25 and 25, we did great. Inside 25, we didn't do as great as we needed to. So, so we got to do a better job. And Concordia was very rarely in the red zone. They just hit big play. Mm -hmm. You know, stroke, 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 punt, then a big play. But they only had one turnover, I think, and that's what helped them out a lot. Yeah. Where we had four. Let me read off some of the stats here so people can really see yeah. how much you did. You know, really dominate the game. First downs, you guys had 24 compared to Concordia 16. You had uh, uh, 45 rushes for 148 yards. They had 43 for 250. Right, that's they're, they're, they ran they're, they're a rushing there. team, right? Yeah, right. but again, two or three of those came on huge, big, yes, big plays. So. Yeah. Passing yards, you guys had 267. They had 137 total. You guys had 83 plays for 415 yards, where mm -hmm. they only had 58 yards, or excuse me, 58 plays for 387 mm -hmm. yards. Um, time of possession, 33-10 to 26-50. As we just go on and on and on, right. again, the examples yeah. there, you guys. But then you look at the two things, of course, scoreboard, then you look at the, the turnovers. Yep. Well, we had four. I think they had one. Mm -hmm. and that's what it goes on. We had three interceptions and a fumble. They had one fumble. Yep. And right then, unfortunately, the interceptions, one time they returned them. Uh, the other time was in the end zone. And the other time was a momentum shifter. So that, that's the thing. You know, you can look at that and make the kids feel a little bit better and say, physically, and, and the physical game, we're not beat up at all after that game. You know, we're, knock on wood, we're freaking healthy still, right. which is great. They had some kids helped off. I mean, there are some kids, and they got some good-looking kids over there now. They mm -hmm. had some... 
good, strong young men, and they play hard. And, and we just kept moving the ball, you know, with the kids we have. And our kids are good, strong kids, too. And we moved the ball and, and got physical with them. So it wasn't a physical. It was just a big play game. Mm -hmm. And that's what ended up happening. A couple of the individual stats. Lupke was 16 of 36, but he had the three picks. Yeah. 263 yards. Dunham, 22 carries for 79 right. yards. Uh, Taff, again, led the receivers with six catches right. for 53 yards. Right. So just want to throw some, yep. some of those yep. out there, too. Well, we got the big game uh, next week. Enough about this game. That's now right. You get got that the, out of yeah, I'm yeah, done, done with this one. <laughs> so, but now right it's, it's kind of interesting. There's a, there's a couple good storylines here. Uh, First right. off, you got the second Concordia. Here we go. Uh, playing Concordia from Illinois. Right. Uh, but, of course, the big story is Jeff Hines, the former coach from Lakeland, right. coming back on homecoming, which right. makes it even more interesting. Right. Right. Jeff is trying to turn around and rebuild that program. But, of course, the story goes back. He was the head coach the last four years at Lakeland. And he's here for, what, 10 years? Yeah, 10, 10 years, years overall, total. six years prior to that, he was the assistant. So now he's coming back, and it's it's uh, it's an interesting, like it is, uh, you know, no matter what anybody says, it is an interesting little side tale here that we got. Well, the most interesting thing is not a lot of coaches come, not a lot of coaches leave the school to go to another school within the conference. Right. I don't care what level you're at. Mm -hmm. You don't see a a guy from Michigan going and taking the Ohio State job. Right. It just doesn't happen. Usually <laughs> teams, usually coaches will leave to go to a different conference. Um, they'll leave to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that you end up having to coach against somebody that's in the league. Sometimes you play in non-conference. Well, here's a, game. Here's a, a guy who went from conference to stayed within the conference mm -hmm. and left somewhere else. So, yeah, it's interesting in terms of, you know, three, three or four, taking fifth-year seniors, you know, four of his classes are still here. Mm -hmm. You know, those kids that he recruited and and so on so that's interesting you know and, and i'm sure anytime there's a change kids are you know some kids it's a it's a weird deal with kids you don't know how they you know some yeah they got they came here for a reason they came mm -hmm. here because they liked lately they came here because they liked coach hines mm -hmm. and all that stuff and and so i think it'll be an interesting deal in, in that sense right. of seeing how the kids react to it and and do they want to you know they want to show them that hey we're still you know i hope they go out there and want to show them that hey you know, we are good football players. You recruited us. We like Lakeland, and we know you left. But, um, you know, we're going to play hard for Lakeland. And he is trying to rebuild a program. He's playing a lot of the young kids on that team, you know, and they're, they, they, they've played well in spurts. And mm -hmm. so on. But it's interesting. It comes to homecoming. It comes yeah. to anything you can imagine. <laughs> you put this game on there, and you come to, oh, uh, did he leave? You know, did he leave on good terms, bad terms, whatever? <laughs> you, you know, you can name a million different storylines. Yeah. But all it was was he left. He went to a different school, unfortunately, or fortunately that schools in our conference. Right. He's got to come back to us, mm -hmm. to Lakeland, on homecoming, you know, and see what happens. Yeah, and the bottom line is really just step number seven for you it guys. It is. You know? Know, you knew, yeah, you knew I'd say that, but <laughs> it is step seven. You know, it's step seven for us in terms of it's just a game. It's a big game for us because last time we lost was well, us. Gosh, we came back and, and beat up Eureka pretty good, mm -hmm. and our kids reacted well. And that's what I told him. To, I told him, I said, we've lost once. You know, before now we've lost again, unfortunately. How are you going to react to that? Are you going to react mm -hmm. the same way we did last time and come out with just a vengeance that someone must pay for that loss? Someone's going to pay for all the pain. Mm -hmm. Cause we can say it all along, but, yeah, you get rid of it, but it's still going to linger. You know, you, you're know, going to get rid of it so you can go practice, get ready for the next game, but someone's got to take, someone's got to pay the price right. for playing a game we could have won. Not should have by any means. So we could have won. We had the opportunities to win. Now we got to forget that and take it out on somebody. And, and Cordy, Illinois happens to be next on our on our schedule. That should be lots of fun. That should well, be. Well, where's the Good conference? Crowd. Where's the conference stack up now? Where are you guys at? Concordia is uh, two and three and zero. Oh. We're two and one. Aurora's two and one. McMurray, I, I just missed that last score. They're either one and two or two and one, and that's. Mm -hmm. I think they won this weekend. They won, so they're two yeah. and one. Yep. So we're two and one. McMurray and Aurora mm -hmm. are two and one. Concordia, Wisconsin is three, and all the rest of the teams are either one and two or, or zero and three. And the tough part is Concordia from Wisconsin, has, unfortunately, has already played Aurora, which right. is probably the other tough team. Yeah, with you yeah. guys. And you, you know, you, and you hope, you hope that they stumble somewhere. But right. I mean, if they, if we stumble again, it doesn't matter what they do. So we can't stumble again. We got to play well and get this thing rolling for the last four games. It really gets, it really just blow up this last part of the season. Mm -hmm. See how good see how good we can be, I told the kid. I, said, I go, good's not good enough anymore. You are good. Mm -hmm. well, let's decide to be great. Right. Let's just decide to play great these last four games instead of good, yeah, we're a good team. Let's stop being a good team. Let's be a great team. Mm -hmm. And from this moment forward, let's be great. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about the Concordia thing. We talked about Hines. What do you feel about you Hope coming You talked about now? Hines. <laughs> I had to bring That's because you know. your buddy. Uh, you knew that was going to come out. <laughs> he, 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 Jeez, you know, he sends me some emails every once in a while. He gives me the old, oh, we're going to take a beating type yeah, thing. But you I know how that is. You no, know. His, kids, his kids play hard. They really do. They, um, he's playing, I think, 17 freshmen probably, yeah. something like that. That's and, what he told me. And his kids play hard. They yeah. do. It's not, you watch tape and they play well. Their defense, they, they do a lot of things on defense, which gives you 
um, headaches because they put a lot of people in the box and they and they bring pressure and they do those kind of things. It's not like they sit there and say, hey, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna take a beating because we're not as physical because we're right. younger. No, the kids, the kids don't give up. They play hard, and and he still has the same offense. So they're gonna. I, the chuck and duck offense, I call it. Anytime you got a team that will throw it all over the place, they make a big play here and there, and, and they can make plays. You just got to make them pay for trying to make big plays yeah. and get them rolling. So I think it'll be a great crowd. How's it, what does it mean for your team with homecoming? Anything different or special because of that? Or? No, I think it's. I think I bring it up especially because I know there's a lot of people are going to come back and mm -hmm. want to see this quote unquote new head coach or this new team, and it's right. not a new team, but the new um, era, I guess, in terms of offensive and defensive things are a little bit different. I think they want to see how are these kids playing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think we've done some renovations of the stadium, which makes it, I think people enjoy coming back to it. And I'm going to make it important for those kids to realize a lot of people come back for this one game a year. Mm -hmm. Of course they come back to hang with their buddies and party sure. and, <laughs> and, and have a good weekend, but they come back to see they're proud mm -hmm. if, if Lakeland wins. And it's a big thing if they went on homecoming and they can go back, yeah, we took it to somebody. And it means a lot. So for our kids, it does mean a lot because they're here because a lot of other people were here before them. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting the sign already. we got to wrap it yeah. up. i got a couple other announcements to make. Yeah. So thanks for joining us again you today, Jim. And then, uh, of course, next week we'll be back again with Jim after the Concordia game. Should be an interesting uh, recap of that game. Otherwise, on the weekend, we've had uh, uh, the men's soccer team defeated Ripon College by the score of 3-2. to two. Mark Cole is doing a nice job with the men's team. They started out slowly and evolved to a 6-7-1 and seven and one team. They were 2-6, and six, so you can see how hot they're getting. Currently uh, undefeated in conference play. The women's volleyball team, coached by Chad Schreiber, doing a great job. They're 13-11 right now. I believe they started out approximately 3-9. and nine. Uh, um, so he's got a nice young team that he's molding into a championship contender in the LMC. So if you get a chance, come on out and uh, make sure you see the Muskies this weekend, October 18th. Nice things going on this weekend. We've got the Hall of Fame ceremonies on Friday and, of course, the football game uh, about 1, 1 p.m. So we'll see you next time on the Lake Locker Room. Thanks for joining us.